Chad, what did you think of the uh, Gene Simmons demos of the songs that you wound up using on the debut album? I like them uh, pretty much. They were what they were. So I mean, if they, they would have played them for me, they would have been pretty much the same. Except that they just needed to mellow out a little bit. They seemed a little bit pop. I, I mean, as Greg mentioned, there was a slight tempo change with "Run with the Devil." And he understood that. That's one of the reasons I started reading the rest of the book, if he got it. And uh, <laughs> that, those little things really make a difference. We thought he's just popping along, and we needed to go, dum, dum, because it was evil, you know? And uh, <laughs> anyway, that was, it, it was just a pop demo. But Gene Simmons was all through it. There's not two ways about it. Yeah, I was going to say that Ted is uh, Ted is so humble, and he, he points out to you know he's talking about all this stuff and be about the the first record of the demo. He's like, yeah, we we we, we did borrow the the car work there from Gene. Like he, you know he's he's even giving give the credit to Gene, so that was really really nice. Yeah. I think what Kevin was trying to get at too is that even if you listen to the Gene Simmons demo as compared to that, and that's just done the best I was able to figure out just like three or four months before you take them in the studio. Um, even on the demo, it just seems like you understood what Dave did well and what Dave didn't do well. And where in a way, I think that Gene, maybe he's here tonight, uh, to his credit, <laughs> that, that because Gene only had a couple of days to work with them, he didn't really get what Dave did well and what Dave didn't do well, and you ended up with something that didn't really come off as well. What did you see that Dave did really well that you tried to play up? And, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, I think you know Gene was really onto it. I mean, he's a great A and R guy, and a great musician, and a, and a visionary. And if he hadn't have gotten mixed up with those guys, it probably wouldn't have happened. I think it, they just needed to relax a little bit. They had to go to New York. They did, had to do all this stuff. And uh, and uh, it's just about the, about the I, I think like the, the screams and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The siren uh, screams, you know. Yeah, I mean, he had a little whistle that he would blow, like a little siren, and he. And I got him to laugh and to loosen up because he was self-conscious. He knew he couldn't hit certain notes. And everybody's self-conscious. I mean, everybody has a fear of being judged. I don't care how good you are. And once he knew that we were just having fun, and I thought, you know, let's have some heavy metal with sets again. Let's have some laughs. And he found his, his form, you know. Really smart guy. And so he learns from the stage or from anything everybody else was doing. He always looked at the other groups around town. You know, the whole Top Jimmy thing and all this stuff. He's looking at all these bands. He learned. But to answer the question, I think if you're in a booth and you relax and you know you can do it again, you know you can do it again. I think that's how he kind of found his footing. <laughs>